Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. It's time for another Metal Earth kit. And sticking with the uh, last one I did, it's time for another Star Wars kit. Today we have Poe Dameron's X-Wing Fighter. Very much looking forward to this. It's very similar to the X-Wing Fighters of before, but with some very obvious changes, one of which being the engines. But, how much different is it to build than the last one? Let's crack this open and find out. Poe Dameron's X-Wing Fighter. What do we have in store? Instructions and two metal sheets. We have two sheets to the instructions, which is reminiscent of what they're starting to do now. Metal Earth is starting to do now with their newer kits, and I like that change. We start off with the the ship and one of the sheets kind of a little pencil drawing almost and you've got the part about the insertion holes and tabs and folds you've got what's been on pretty much every kit needle nose pliers are helpful for assembly and they very much are and then the blue circle and triangle which tell you whether or not to fold or bend a tab over at 90 degrees which is blue or green which is twist at 90 degrees but the instructions are getting better and down here you've got the two different sheets and one thing they've started doing is color coding or coloring certain parts and what happens is you've got a lot of duplicate parts like these little um, guns there's four of them and they're very they're they're all the same so they give it one number and before and it shows you the number for one, and you just kind of had to find the rest. Now, they're actually coloring them to help you. And with these guns, that's not a big deal. But there have been kits in the past where parts were very similar, but different. And it was very difficult to tell which one. If only one part was numbered, and there's four of them, but then there's two of another part that are very similar, how can you tell them apart? And it was very difficult. I remember that being a big problem with the Droidica. But they fixed that, and it's wonderful. I'm so glad they're doing this now. It certainly helps out. But this doesn't open up like a book like you would expect. Actually, open it the wrong way and flip it. There's page one, page two. This is where you start. You pretty much go in the order of the number of parts. Here's three and four, 10, 11, and so on and so forth. And I will say what I've noticed is they have made some changes as far as how the X-Wing comes together. This is a little bit different than the previous one. Number one is this piece opens up and allows you to stick the parts in there. So that's kind of nice. But what I like most of all is you have more detail in how to put these parts together. And it shows you the front of the two different wings because it was very easy to put them together the wrong way and then nothing else fit properly. So this helps you, gives you more detail and it helps you find the right part. Even goes so far, it looks like it gives little dots on the end. Which, where is it? It shows you here. Make sure these dots are on top. If they're not, if you only have one or you don't see them at all, you've put it together wrong. So that's very good and will clear up things, make it easier to get right because that was a problem I, the x-wing I did before I had to toss it and redo it because I put the wings on wrong and didn't realize it until it was too late and you continue on to the next sheet open it up find five and six seven and eight and just follow along now tools that I'll be using for starters I have the Fascinations tool set, which I'm very fond of. The clippers especially, they're wonderful for getting parts off of tab or, or parts off of the trees or spruce easily. The long needle nose pliers are very helpful and these are flat nose and surprisingly helpful. And always I have a pair of tweezers that still come in handy. I'm moving farther away from them as I do these kits, but they're still handy for some things. I also have and frequently use some forceps. They're locking, so they're good for holding on to the small parts while you line them up. 
These are particularly long, which is also good for getting into certain areas and slightly thinner than the needle nose that I have. And these are even tinier, which I picked up on my last kit and found them very useful. And then I have some ring pliers, which have rounding tips. And they're good for putting in parts and just kind of bending them softly and shaping things. And I have an assortment of dowel rods that I like to keep on hand. I have numerous different sizes. These come in great for um, cylinder shaped or round parts for wheels and tires and in this case part of the cannon. I have a paintbrush that that uh, tapers and that's handy for shaping some parts. And I also like to keep a small pocket knife on hand. It's uh, handy for wedging into small areas. I found this useful many times for bending tabs over that were in very difficult to reach areas. I also have a lighted magnifying glass that helps me to see the small parts. But enough talk. Let's get to building. We start with the front tip of the X-Wing. It was a bit tricky to get the first two tabs in place. I often bend tabs over with my fingernails. Once the parts are in place and the tabs bent over, I pinch them down with pliers to secure the tabs. Bend the middle tab straight up to line up with the other tabs to allow it to fit to the next part. Other times you will have to bend the tabs in the same direction like this. The little top of the BB unit is very small and a bit tough to work with. I use the tip of a paintbrush to help shape it. The directions often tell you to fold or shape a part before putting little pieces on. I like to attach the little pieces then fold the sides unless that little piece will get in the way of that folding. Find it easier to get to the areas needed to fold and twist the tabs most of the time. It sometimes takes several small adjustments to make parts fit and tabs slide into place. Study the parts and directions to be sure you have the wings connected the right way. This kit is easier than the previous X-Wing. If the wings are together correctly, you will see two little circles on the top edge of the wings. It took me a lot of adjusting of the body to get the X-Wing to sit in place. I bent the two tabs on the bottom back in outwards to make it easier to line up the tabs.
I use dowel rods to help form a lot of the rounded and circular shapes. I often start with a rod that is a little bigger than I think I need, and then work my way down to the correct size, trying to keep parts from kinking or bending too much in one spot. With the circular parts, I bend the connecting tabs over most of the way with the tweezers, then roll the part on the desk with the dowel rod or paintbrush inside to push the tabs the rest of the way. Repeat the last few steps three more times for a total of four little tubes. I often use the taper on the paintbrush to push the smaller tubes back into shape. I remember dealing with the engines on the older X-Wing fighter. I learned it was not a good idea to bend over all the sides before attaching the small parts. It made it hard to get to the tabs to twist and fold them. Some of the tabs I only bent a little bit to make them crease so they'd be easier to bend later. Sometimes even I do not quite pay enough attention to the directions and have to redo parts. It helps to bend all the tabs the same direction towards the next piece. It makes fitting the parts together much easier. You basically repeat the steps for the other three engines. The first two are exactly the same, the second two are mirrored. I initially twisted the tabs holding the engines on. The instructions say to bend them, and bending does look better. I came back later to straighten them out and bend them over. I did the last two engines kind of together. It was here that I realized I should be bending the engine tabs over and not twisting them. Shaping the barrel on the wing tips took some time. I did not have exactly the right size rod or tool for it, but I did the best I could with what I had. I 
I used the taper of the paintbrush to round out the ends. The sides of the wing that fold up confused me at first. I thought I'd accidentally bent the tip of them, but it turns out the ends are supposed to be curved and the tip of the wing is supposed to be curved to match. The instructions have you build the guns for the top wings first and then build the two guns for the bottom wing second. I often use ring pliers to curve cone shaped parts. In this video, I cut out some parts where I tried numerous times to get a part to fit or had to make multiple adjustments to something to allow it to fit. I try to show a little bit of everything, but sometimes you may see in a video that I make one or two adjustments, when in reality I made many more. I do that to move the build along. These builds take time. Be patient, take your time, and be prepared to make numerous test fits and adjustments during this or any build. Ladies and gentlemen, the new X-Wing Fighter. I enjoyed this build. It wasn't terribly difficult. It has its challenges. If you're not practiced or familiar with making the rounded parts, this might not be the best one to start with. But it wasn't too terrible. It just, like any of them, takes time and adjustment and getting used to. Uh, I did have a few little issues with getting some things backwards, but the instructions are getting better on these kits. So it's easier to make sure that you're doing things the right way. The um, big difference between this kit and the previous X-Wing is the previous one, it was easy because of the way these wings fit together. It's two pieces that are cut in the middle. And I myself, on the first one, got it backwards and didn't realize it until I had fastened it inside the body and started to put extra pieces on it and the engines and such and they wouldn't fit properly. It was difficult to make sure you got it correctly. It was easy to make the mistake of doing it wrong. This one does good to solve that problem. The instructions are more detailed and if you look on the very top of the two upper wings, there's a little bitty circle and they put that in the instructions. If you see the little circles on the top, you put it together correctly. If not, try again. And it tells you which side is the front and which is the back. I like that this cockpit is a more solid piece. The previous kit, it was kind of open and being that way, the metal was very thin. It was very easy to warp it. It was rather difficult to bend it straight. And with this being a solid sheet of metal without the holes in it, that problem was solved. In the previous kit, the wings, once you put them together, you slid them through the gap in the middle, open them up and attach them, which wasn't terrible. That was not too bad. A little tricky, but I can't say it was any trickier than this. It just flips up and you put the wing in there and flip it back down. That was actually really tricky trying to get everything to line up and, and fit over and under and, and whatnot. And then you've got the back piece where they fit together and it was... <clears throat> not sure that it was worth the effort to do it that way. I did spend a lot of time carefully bending and shaping the different parts because there's so many round parts, but they're very repetitive. So you get lots of practice. So if you're looking for practice on shaping round parts, here you go. And uh, any comments or questions, leave them down below and keep on keeping them.